good to be here talking to you guys about my favorite subject, which of course is bookkeeping. Tonight, we're going to talk about one of your, all of your favorite subjects, which is bills, 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 bills. I'm going to share this in the group now that it's showing up on Facebook. It like takes a few seconds once I start talking to actually show up. So here we go, sharing to a group, and I don't know if you guys saw um, our promo on this, but it's, uh, they made me this great promo, it was like bills, 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 and um, I really liked it because it made it sound like it was this super exciting topic when really it's like, I don't know, I mean there's death, taxes, and then probably bills on our top favorite things to talk about. But we are going to talk about them. Um, as always, feel free to ask any questions on here. I will answer them to the best of my ability. There's things that I know a lot about and things that I don't know a lot about. So I'll just answer you to the best of my ability. Um, Okay, good, and, and thank you everyone for being here. I love that there's people who are, you know, my fan base and they, they watch me live talking about bills. And what is the best way to handle bills? Like I should just read the, this promo that they made me and then I'll know what to talk about. Okay, so what is the best practice when it comes to paying bills? How should we do it? How do we make sure that they're on time, how do we track them? How do we plan for and set them aside? How do we make sure we maintain credit credit worthiness? Meaning like we don't F up our credit score. Look at me, I'm not swearing live. Um, and how do we know what we should and should not spend on right now? These are the things that we will be discussing. All right, so let, let's, I guess let's start at the beginning. Um, and hello everyone. Okay, so one of the things that we all have in common is that we all have bills. We all get bills. Um, as a bookkeeper, I have you know over 100 clients. I think I have 115 clients. One thing that they have in common other than you know taxes is they all get bills. So, what's the best way to handle it? First of all, you want to keep them all in one place. So, assuming that you have QuickBooks or you have a bookkeeping software, um, even if you don't, if you're using Excel or something like that, the thing to do would be to have them all in one place. So, if you're using QuickBooks, you enter them all in. Hi, Sean, thanks for joining us. Um, you're going to enter them all in. So QuickBooks, if you're using the version that you know you can enter bills, which is the one that you want, you're going to enter each bill in. Now, um, as soon as you receive them, if you have a bookkeeper, if I'm your bookkeeper, you send all your bills to the bookkeeper. You know, preferably not by mail. Preferably you scan them all in, or even better, have them sent to you soft copy email instead of in the mail. But some are always going to mail them to you, so you scan them in and send them to your bookkeeper. Or if, you're, if you don't have a bookkeeper, if you're doing this yourself, you enter them all in yourself. And here's the things that you want to know about them. You want to know what they're for, how much they are, when they're due. So now I'm really talking here about bills and not debt. You know, um, how I like to think of it is, let's say you have debt that has, you know, payments like your mortgage or even credit cards. They have payments that are due every month. Those are the bills. We're not trying to necessarily pay off debt here. If you have debt that you want to pay down, Jerry uh, did a great video and article about this, I think today, and obviously you use the sacred account for that and you know he has a whole plan um, and I love his plan. But we're just talking about the regular bills that you get or even like the monthly payments on the debt, right? Okay, so I, cause I get asked this all the time, like, should I count the debt as a bill, you know, or whatever? No, we're just talking about the monthly payments or sometimes they're annual payments, whatever it is. So you, now you have a list and you can sort it by when it's date, uh, when it's dated. Um, now obviously if you aren't 
um, doing too well financially, then you might have some that are past due. So the best thing to do is going to be pick a date, like how much money do you have available to pay bills, and then pick a date and pay all the bills that are due up to that date. So like let's say let's say you're you know behind um, a little bit, but you can pay all your bills through December 30th, let's say. So you just pay everything through then. What you don't want to do is pay a partial payment. Other than the fact that you're going to confuse the people who receive the money and they're not going to know how to apply it, it doesn't actually help your credit score because you didn't make a full payment, right? So you want to pay the whole payment. Now one thing that sometimes happens as you start to get these all together in a list is that you'll find some annoying past due bill, like maybe it was a, a parking ticket you didn't pay or something like that from like a year ago. So that just needs to get paid. It's just that you weren't organized, right? So you're going to pay it by dateline. That's the best way to do it. You're going to pick a date and pay everything up until that date. If you can't, you know, pay everything through today, if you can't pay everything through uh, the end of last month, whatever it is, you pick when you can pay it, you know, how much you can pay. Now, obviously prior to that, you have to have money to do that. So, and for a lot of us, it's not that we're not making any money or that we don't have any money, it's that maybe we weren't organized. Hi Justin, thanks so much for joining us. Happy Thursday. Welcome to the bottom line live. I'm talking about something we all have in common, bills. Bills, bills, bills. Okay, so for a lot of us, it's not that we don't have any money coming in to pay them, it's just maybe that we're not organized. We don't have them all in one list, we don't have them all in one place. Um, we paid randomly different ones. Now, of course, as you're paying by Dateline, if you have vendors that will literally shut off your electricity or uh, kick you out of your office if you don't pay it, you know, because it's past due or it's, um, or it just has to get paid every month, you have to pay those. You don't have a choice. You know, we do know that, that there are things that have to get paid. They're either too far past due, they're going to cause you a big problem if you don't pay them, fine. So you got to do what you got to do. But everything else you would pay by dateline. Now, how do we get organized to do this? So first of all, you need bookkeeping. You need to be able to see your numbers and you need financial planning. What do I mean by that? So, you know, people call this different things, but a lot of people talk about budgeting. Now, when I talk about budgeting, um, I'm not talking about it in the exact same way that it's usually talked about. It's not, um, you know, let's create a budget for how much I want to spend for the month or year, and then at the end of that time period, see if I made it. Like, that's not very useful unless you're, you know, a government entity and you're trying to get more money because you have to spend your entire budget. We want to talk about budgeting as something causative, right? So you want to determine um, every week how much money came in. Um, how much is, you know, off the top going for, you know, merchant fees or bank fees? How much is off the top going to go for payroll? Um, how much is left that's going to go to, or like, you know, as Grant Cardone says, pay yourself first. So let's say you have your 40% off the top that you're paying yourself towards savings or whatever it is, your 10% of your revenue, whatever that is, your reserves, all that. Great. Then how much is left for bills? Okay, good. Now take that. Even to make it simple, put it into a separate bank account that's just for your operating expenses, and that's how much money you have to pay bills. Now, you're going to be really causative about that based on your financial plan, based on your budget, and you're going to not have a bunch of auto pays that come out of there. You know, like if you want to have auto pays, um, try to set them up on a credit card. I know I'm, I'm being... Uh, a little bit mean when I say this because I have all of my clients set up to pay me on auto pay, but you know, we're dealing with money, so I'm sure you understand why. Um, what we do, for instance, when we have clients that have auto pays, is we add those in as a recurring bill in QuickBooks so that it's always coming up every month as a bill. So, and there's certain things that you know, maybe you have on auto pay like that, it's better not to have things coming out that you don't know about, but if it's a fixed amount. 
Okay, fine, just add that to the financial plan and make sure that the amount of money that you transfer into that account covers all of those bills that you're gonna be paying. Um, you know, I could do a whole nother webinar just about financial planning, but think about this, like if you sat down and don't, I have said this before, don't ask me to do it with you, I will charge you like $500 an hour because people cry, but sit down and make a list of all the things that you need to be paying for, that you want to be paying for, like, you know, you want your 40% for your um, savings, you want, and, and obviously, I'm pretty sure when Jerry says 40%, he's talking about of your personal income, so maybe it's not 40% out of your actual uh, business income, but whatever that is out of your business income that you have to pay yourself to make enough money to pay your own personal bills, whatever, right, you know, You've got, you want to donate to charity. You want to save up for a vacation. If you're like me, you want to save up for your new Tesla. You know, all these different things that you want to put money aside for, those all go on the financial plan. And then you can really see how much money do you need to be making. Then in your financial plan, like as far as for the year, right? And then every week you're going to do it based on actual money that came in. So what we do for our clients and for ourselves, we put money into a, a different bank account called an income account. All the money goes in there. We don't spend any of it until we do our financial plan. Then we do the financial plan. You know, For me, I approve it. For the clients, they approve theirs. And we go, great, in the financial plan, here's the income. Here's um, you know bank charges that came off the top. Here's how much the payroll is going to be based on that. Uh, here's, you know your reserves, or this, or that, or this, it gets approved. Here's the amount for bills approved, good, it all gets transferred out. So no money gets spent out of the income account. You transfer money out, you know, some goes in, let's say you have a payroll account separate, you have your operations account separate for your bills, um, you have your reserves account separate for things you're saving up for, taxes, you know, whatever it is, there's lots of things. And, um, that is kind of the precursor to paying the bills. Then when you go to pay the bills, there are times where you don't have enough money maybe to pay all the bills. It sucks, but there's some weeks that it happens. There's some months that it happens. There's some time periods that it happens. So all you're going to do is put them in order of when they are due. And you're going to pay the ones that fit into your dateline and you're going to pay everything up until that point based on how much money you have to pay. Even if you're not doing a financial plan, I'm not saying that you have to do an entire financial plan in order to do that, right? You literally can just start with, okay, I have a thousand dollars to pay bills and I have two thousand dollars of bills. Good. Well, if I pay everything up to this date, that's eight hundred and ninety nine dollars. So. I'm gonna pay all of those bills. I'm gonna leave, you know, this other hundred dollars, whatever is left, hundred one dollars left in the bank account for the next bills that come in. And when I have time to pay, you know, the next ones, then the next week you go, okay, I have another five hundred dollars plus that hundred dollars. I have six hundred dollars. I I have sixteen hundred dollars of bills. I can pay one more week's worth of due bills, you know, to get out of it. Of course, you can always pay ahead when you're having good weeks, when you have lots of money. It's even more important to have good financial planning and organization when you're making a lot of money um, so you don't waste money. But it feels really, really, really important when you don't have a lot of money and you got to get really organized because you're tight. We don't want that for anyone. We want affluences. We want, you know, prosperity. But obviously many different types of situations happen, so that's why I'm giving you all of that. Okay, what else is on this, this promo that I'm supposed to talk about? All right, how do we know what we should and should not spend on right now? Okay, so, you know, I know that Jerry has talked about this, but let's say you are trying to pay down debt, you, you're trying to get to your 40% in savings, you're trying to put all your extra money towards your sacred account. Does that mean that you shouldn't, you know, go out to eat or you shouldn't buy that new pair of shoes? No. If you need a new pair of shoes, buy a new pair of shoes. I'm not saying go buy a, you know, $2,000 pair of designer shoes. That might not be in the budget, but don't walk around with holes in your shoes either just so that you can pay, 
you know, have $50 more to your savings. So, like, let's keep this realistic. We're not trying to be, uh, you know, I can't even remember that guy's name. And neither Nano or Jerry are on here right now because otherwise they'd be commenting all kinds of things. But, you know, Uncle Dave, Ramsey, right? Like, where he says, like, don't spend any money until you just do all your savings. Like, we're not trying to tell you to kill yourself and not be able to buy anything just so you can get out of debt one day faster. Justin, I have friends that own $2,000 shoes. I'm, you know, jealous of them because that's not in my budget to buy $2,000 shoes yet. But someday $2,000 shoes will feel like uh, $50 shoes and then I'll probably go buy them. Uh, but we're not saying that you don't, that you have to kill yourself, that you have to feel deprived, that you have to just like, you know, sacrifice, like, no. But be, be realistic, live within your means, like maybe don't buy that sports car if you're in a ton of debt. Maybe don't buy those designer shoes if you can't even pay your bills. Hey, Nano, good. Usually you make all kinds of comments, you know, and I know you're here, but you're being very quiet tonight. Um, so that's kind of the thing, right? Have Give yourself enough money to live on that you can still feel happy and in budget, but be in your budget, right? Like. I am picky on groceries. I buy almost all my groceries from Whole Foods. They're almost all organic. I have like this list of what I can't eat and what I can eat and I'm eating a lot of fish these days and not a lot of chicken or, or beef and you know what? It, it costs a lot of money. I don't know what to say. I'm not eating ground beef. So that's the way it is. I'm not going to try to deprive myself and say I can only eat beans and rice but I'm also um, not going to go invite all my friends out and pay a thousand dollar dinner if that's not in my budget. So keep it realistic, live within your means so you can pay all your bills and you can pay your debt and you can do your payments to your sacred account, but don't, you know, kill yourself in the process. Like I think we can all agree on that. We don't have to have austerity measures. I mean, unless, you know, all you can afford is beans and rice and that sucks, but beans and rice is a pretty good protein I hear. Okay. So the other thing to keep track of is that you have to be aware of these things ahead of time, right? Like you don't want to get to the end of the year and realize that you owed taxes and you didn't set aside any money for it. So we know that there could be a tax bill every year. We know that every year there's a property tax bill, all these things. You don't have to, you need to not just think about the ones that are coming up tomorrow, the ones that are coming up next month. You gotta think with the ones coming up for the whole year and set aside money for that in your financial planning. And how do you know that? You know that by having bookkeeping, you know that by looking at your profit and loss and seeing what you spent money on last year. You know, obviously, you know, we can get a lot more into taxes as far as like how do we save more money on taxes, making sure you have payroll, making sure you're taking all your deductions, but you still might, you know, if you're a business owner, you still are gonna probably owe some taxes at the end of the year, hopefully not very much, but set aside money for it. Put Whether you put it in your uh, sacred account or you put it in a savings account or you send it to the IRS every month, you know, whatever you do, realize that that comes. And there's some bills that really only come once a year, like property taxes, um, I don't know, certain insurance things, you know, so just be planning for those things and not just be surprised when you owe the money all of a sudden. Like, be setting aside money for things coming up. All right, good. Um, so that's, um, how do we maintain credit worthiness? Okay, so your credit score, while it's not the end all and the most important thing in the world, it is kind of important if you're trying to, you know, buy a house or whatever, right? So the way to maintain that is just to pay everything on time. And, you know, it's pretty simple, but, um, you know, it's going to be credit cards, it's going to be medical bills, things like that. You set the money aside. You don't spend more on your credit card, you know, than you are going to be able to pay off. Obviously, credit cards are great if you're using them for points. You're using them to manage your finances as far as, Okay, you know you have this much money, you're gonna put all your expenses on your credit card and then you're paying it off that month so that you don't owe interest, things like that. But credit cards aren't great um, if you just decide to spend on them 
and you can't pay it off. You know, or especially like charge cards like Amex. I've seen people be like, well, I think I have this big, you know, income thing coming in this month that doesn't come in. Now you owe all that money. Like just stay within your actual budget. Maybe wait till you get paid, something like that. Uh, but it's really easy to have a good credit score. Keep your debt to income ratio low. So, you know, below 30%. Um, pay everything on time. Maya and Celeste are taking care of our payroll now. Justin says, absolutely. We have, I'm pretty sure we have it all set up. It's all organized. You don't have to worry about it and stress about it. As much as I, I want to say that everybody is capable of doing it all themselves, um, payroll is one thing that gets complicated easily. Justin, I'm sure you'll agree. There's um, states and federal to set it up with. You need your unemployment insurance number. Once you have it set up, it's not too difficult to maintain, but it is a, a pain in the ass. Even for me, you know, I hired a new employee in another state and I didn't check all the rules for that state. And all of a sudden, there are rules that I don't like. Like there's, um, you know, overtime laws in different states that are different. Some states have sick pay that is mandatory, things like that. So you have to know these things, especially in this day and age where we're hiring all remotely. You know, everybody's working from home. So it counts as where they are located, not where the business is located, where the employee is located. So there's just a lot to know about. Um, oh, great, Justin, thank you. Justin says that his payroll went through perfectly. I do have a payroll specialist. Her name is Celeste. Some of you have spoken to her, and uh, she's awesome. Okay, Jerry says, if someone is spending for business items on a credit card, what should they consider when tracking that for their P&L? It might look like they have two sets of expenses, if they're not paying attention, the actual expense, oh, let me I have to click to open this, the actual expense on the card and then paying off the card with the bank account. Okay, that's a really good point. Um, what we do in QuickBooks Online, to keep it simple, and actually in any QuickBooks and any accounting software you can do this, is the, um, Justin says Celeste is awesome. I'm going to show her this and she's going to love it, but she is awesome. She's just She's so responsible and she's so smart and she does all the research that she needs to. She's, I love her so much. I'm blessed to have her working for me. Okay, so to answer Jerry's question. So you do track the expenses on the credit cards, right? Because those are the ones that have, like for instance, just to explain, let's say you um, donated a bunch of money on a credit card, which I feel that maybe we have all done at some point. You made a donation to your church for the end of the year, you wanted the tax write-offs, whatever. You donated on your credit card. You have the tax deduction in that time period, like in 2021 in December, you made a donation on your credit card. You have that deduction for the taxes. Now in 2022, you paid off that credit card. You don't get the deduction again, right? Now you're just literally just transferring money from your bank account to your credit card. So that's how you would market an accounting software as well. Moving money from your bank account to your credit card is just a transfer. You're just moving money. It's not an additional expense. So you track all the expenses on your credit card that you're using for business, and then you show the money moved from your bank account to your credit card, and it's not an additional expense. Um, there's other ways to do it. Let's say you're not tracking the credit card as a business um, credit card and you used it for business one time, so you can take that payment that you made and split it. So you can go, okay, I made a $1,000 donation, I bought a $1,000 desk from my office, I bought a computer, you know, and you just have it split in the credit card payment and then it would show that way, but that's not the way that I would recommend doing it because then the date is gonna be based on when you paid the credit card and not based on when you actually made the purchase. And when you're talking about like end of the year for business deductions, you wanna use the credit card date. Unless you, you, know, you paid it on the credit card and then you literally paid it off the next day. So keep it simple, anything from a, from a bank account to a credit card is a transfer, not an expense. And a transfer doesn't you know, count as income, right? So let's say you move money from your income account to your payroll account or to your operations account it's just money moving it doesn't count as income it's not taxable and that's important because otherwise 
it could look like it's taxable income if you don't enter it correctly. Uh, reason number 365, why you need a good bookkeeper. Um, good, hopefully I answered that for you, Jerry. Okay, new question. How do you track if an expense is bringing in good ROI? Is there anything you like to look at to gauge that or to cut the expense out if it's not helping grow the business? Um, you know, I feel like that's really personal as far as business to business. I'm not a CFO, so I'm not going to tell you your ROI and whether you should get a new merchant service for your credit cards and whether you should, you know, do all these things. But I do think that it's something you should look at. There's different ways that you can track it. For instance, in QuickBooks, you can class things, right? So um, let's say you had kind of different projects or different areas of your business. You can track, you can class them, and then you could run a profit and loss by class, and you can see what income is coming in and how much that's costing. And the same time, you can run a profit and loss by client. So as long as you label every expense having to do with a client, you know, the ones that are client related, not, uh, not you know, business expenses like office supplies or something, then you can really see how much money is coming in and how much that's costing you per client. So there's different ways to run reports as long as you enter the data with enough detail to be able to see that. Um, and then in the end, you just have to look kind of at your bottom line, right? Uh, you know, how much payroll are you paying and how much money are you making? If you're paying out 90% in payroll, you're not profitable. Like we know this. You're going to have a negative number at the end. Um, if you, you know, as far as like could you save money in certain areas, you should look at that. You should look at that every month by looking at your numbers, you know, really see what your profit is based on that. You know, you can run your reports as detailed as you want them to be as long as you're putting all that information in there. You know, like contractors, they're gonna wanna run, they're gonna do job costing, they're gonna wanna know per client, were they profitable? Um, real estate investors, they wanna know per property, were they profitable? You know, if you wanna get even more detailed than that and like run an analysis, that's gonna be each business owner is gonna need to do that. Or there's probably like CFOs or controllers that you can hire to really look at that for you. Um, but one thing to keep in mind is that when you are paying bills, you can look at it and just look at it with the individual bill. Like, you know, are you a brand new business and you decided to rent out an office space that's costing you $10,000 a month and nobody ever walks in and nobody ever sees you? Do you see any profit from having that office space? Like, is that something that is an investment, every single bill that you pay, and I think this is probably what Jerry's getting at here, is that every single bill that you pay, you have to look at it like an investment. It's an investment into your business. So you have to take a look and see, does it give you return on investment? Uh, the other thing to look at is your statistics, right? Your your KPIs, your lead measures, you know, whatever you wanna call them. If you have good enough statistics per area, you can see, like let's say, you know, your new public division, you are investing all this money in new marketing campaigns, but yet your new uh, income from new clients is down. So obviously what you're doing isn't working, what you're investing isn't coming to fruition, so you might be doing something wrong there, and that's a way to look at it. Like, look at what is the profit, and you should be tracking these things on your KPI. You can track them on your P&L. You know, there's lots of different ways to look at it, but every single bill is an investment into your business. So it's not just, okay, I bill this, bill that. Like, look at each one and decide, is this something I'm gonna invest in? Obviously, you have to pay the bill, but do you have to continue paying it, or is it something you should be canceling? Is this a software you're no longer using? You know, really pay attention to that. Okay. Jerry says, overall, what would you say are the top ROI expenses you see with most companies? Do you see that it's marketing, payroll, or maybe something else? I asked because these are the ones we want to know to spend more on. Okay, that's a really good point. I think it depends. I mean, you have to have effective things, right? So if, you have, if you're paying a bunch of money on marketing but it's not effective and it's not getting you money back, um, it's not good ROI. 
So it's good to spend a lot of money on marketing, like you wanna spend a certain percentage of all of your income on marketing, but it has to be effective marketing, so you have to track the statistics very closely. Now I do know I'm not a marketing person, and marketing people will tell you that it takes up to six months to see a result. But look at the sub-products, like are you starting to get more clients in, is it making a difference, are your statistics going up or down, right? You gotta look at those closely. Same with payroll. Payroll, of course, is a very good investment in your company, but if you're hiring the wrong people, or the people aren't trained correctly, or they don't know what they're supposed to be doing, or I don't know, maybe they're just assholes and they're staying home, but they're not really working and you're paying them, it's not a good investment. So I don't think there's an overall, overall, you know, what's the best investment. Like each one is an important investment. Marketing is a very important investment. Investing in your delivery of your product is a very important investment, but they have to each one be evaluated against its own ROI and its own efficiency. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I mean, obviously, yeah, uh, marketing, sales, delivery, advertisement, those are all things that are important, you know. Having software so you can keep everything organized and making sure you can deliver correctly, that's obviously very, very important. But do you need the software that's $10,000 a month or do you need the one that's $100 a month that depending on how many clients you have? So it has to be uh, in your budget and it's an investment into your business. So I don't know if that totally answers the question because I think it really depends, um, you know. And, and also, like, you really can't compare. Like, I have hundreds of books that I'm looking at that I have access to, and they're all different. And there's some companies that started the company last year, and they're making $2 million annually already. They'll make $5 million this year. And there's some companies that started five years ago, and they're making one hundred and fifty dollars or 200000 so it's really different for everyone, and you can't compare yourself against another company, maybe another company in your industry, but even then, you can only compare your company to your company yesterday, or your company last year, and see if the things that you're doing are working. Okay, Jerry says, yes, I think a lot of times it can be scary for people to spend money to grow the business, so it's great to know what to look for and how to gauge that, because we do need them to spend into expansion times. Yeah, that's the other thing, right? Like. Savings is good. You want to have your personal 40% to put into your sacred account, you know, to save, to have money set aside for taxes, to have money set aside for, you know, things that you want to do. But I don't think that there's any reason to just feed the bank and have money sitting there, having a couple of million dollars sitting in the bank. For what? You know, you should be, or maybe it's not a couple million, maybe it's 50,000, maybe it's 100,000, but you need to be using money to invest in growing your company. Like, what is your purpose for having the business as a business owner? Like, yes, it's always to help people, it's to sell what you're selling, but it's to grow your business, right? So you gotta take that money, take those things, um, and invest, grow the business, whether you're investing in really good employees, whether you're investing in great marketing strategies or uh, marketing companies. Even it's like, okay, we all know that Facebook ads work but your ad has to be tailored to work, you know, for you. In general, Facebook ads work. But if it's not working, you have to tailor the ad and you have to have a good marketing person who knows how to do that because I don't know how to do that because I'm not marketing. I know how to sit here and talk to you guys and then I send my video to my marketing team and they send it off. So, okay, what are the three dumbest mistakes to avoid on spending? Um, okay. Spending willy-nilly without keeping track of everything so that you didn't notice you had a bill that was due a year ago. Like, that's just dumb. You have the $100 to pay it. You just weren't organized and you didn't pay it and now you have hundreds of dollars in late fees or bad credit because you weren't organized. So mistake number one. Um, mistake number two is when you get those fake bills in the mail, right? Like. They say they they say their bills, or but they maybe in small print say this really isn't a bill. Don't pay those. Um, or like you know, don't fall for scams. I had a, an employee recently uh, call what she thought was HP customer support, and they tried to sell her a five hundred fifty dollar Windows license, and she was texting me, and I told her Windows licenses you always come with the computer, and they're thirty five dollars. Get off the phone with this scammer. 
So don't fall for scams and always look you because listen, we all have like a bunch of credit cards and bank accounts, right? You have to look at these things very closely to make sure that there wasn't fraud or any scams on your account that you weren't aware of. So that kind of goes together. Um, and then the next biggest mistake, the dumbest mistake to avoid on spending, um, investing in things that aren't good investments for your company, whether that's hiring an employee that doesn't know what they're doing and not spending the time to train them, or a marketing campaign that doesn't work and not canceling it. And, and going along with that, when people have all these like random ass recurring transactions and um, things that they signed up for that they're not even using anymore, and they're still getting charged $10 a month, $7 a month, $8 a month, and you stopped using that software or plan 10 months ago and you forgot to cancel it. So there you go. Uh, Jerry says, Dumb, paying more to your credit card company than you owe on your balance, so they owe you. I've actually heard that one before. Yeah, you know what? That goes along with paying the IRS so you get a refund. You're literally lending them money which they invest and make lots of money on and they just pay you your principal and they don't pay you interest. So don't overpay bills ever. Like they're, think of them as an investment, right? Just like you would look at, um, you know, should I invest in Bitcoin or should I invest in the stock market? Should I invest in a sacred account? You know, whatever you're looking at and you want to do your due diligence and find everything out, everything, every dollar that comes out of your business is an investment into your business. Um, anything to avoid on an operating basis. Not paying attention. How much money do you lose because you didn't notice that your bank overdrafted? People, I have clients that have hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars a year in overdraft fees, late fees, just because they're not organized, not because they don't have the money. Um, and then again, having expenses, you know, software that you're paying for, subscriptions you're paying for, that you're not using. And I'm not talking about if you are using it. Like, you know what? I am not canceling my Spotify subscription. Obviously, this is, I'm talking about personal. This is not a business expense. But I'm not canceling my Spotify subscription. Even if I'm too busy to listen to music all the time, it's worth that $10 a month. But there's other ones, guys, that I don't use, right? That you haven't used in a long time. Or, or that gift box that you signed up for that you don't care about and you haven't opened the last three. Cancel it, you just don't need it. But even more than that, are you using your McAfee subscription or did you get another antivirus? Are you using your Adobe subscription or, you know, do you still have that computer that it was on? Whatever it is, but like, you gotta go through those every once in a while because you're not using them all. Guaranteed, there's one or two you're not using. Okay, and the IRS gives you a return and it's like a noble thing that happened when it's just my money to begin with. Nano says, yeah, exactly. They're giving you a refund of your money that was yours to begin with that you overpaid them and they literally are using it to invest. I mean, I don't know for sure, but banks are, so I imagine the IRS is as well, to invest so they have more money and, uh, and they give it back to you with no interest. You literally could have made a bunch of interest on it if you put it into your sacred account. You could have paid bills. You could have invested in whatever you needed to invest in, but you didn't. So don't overpay bills ever. And also, don't pay a credit card bill if you can't eat. Like, what's the worst thing that can happen if you're a few days late on a credit card bill? Literally nothing. If you're 60 days past due, then they will, um, you know, ding your credit score. But even your credit score is not the most important thing. Being able to eat and pay for your kid's school and all that is more important than your credit card. That you, you're never going to go to jail because you couldn't pay the credit card on time. So make sure you take care of yourself, you know, pay yourself first, and then use the rest of the money to invest into your business, um, to invest into growth, you know. Oh my gosh, another thing to invest in, coaches, but really good coaches, not just like uh, ones that don't do anything and you pay money to, right? All, all of these things are like good things to invest in. Education. Learn more so that you can invest more into your business, you know. Take the classes on your finances. Take the classes in your industry. Learn more. Those are the best things to invest in are yourself. If you become better trained, more able, you will make more money, right? So start there and then invest in your employees. Invest in your marketing. Invest in your growth. Not necessarily in that order, but start with your yourself first. 
Um, good. Okay, I've been talking about bills, which I thought I only had like 10 minutes of material to talk about for 40 minutes now. So does anybody have any other questions? I kind of went over it more mechanically in the beginning as far as like write them all down, put them in order, and pay by dateline. So you're not um, just paying a little bit on each one or something stupid. Like pay the bill based on where you can afford up to, right? Don't miss bills that are a year old just because you didn't write them down anywhere or you forgot to give them to your bookkeeper. That just costs you a lot of money and it's not worth it. Um, know how much money you have in your bank account before you pay things, right? Like don't, don't pay a big bill when you also just paid payroll and then there's no money left and now you overdraft. That causes you problems. So you have to know your numbers. You have to know where everything's at. Obviously you have a really good bookkeeper too because they will help, but still, if you transfer money out and you pay your payroll, like you're gonna have an overdraft fee, so don't do that. Okay, good, yeah, Sean, you're very welcome. Okay, I'm just doing like a quick overview, but I think I've said almost everything there is to say on bills. They are investments, right? Okay, good, so if anybody has any questions, feel free to write the question on here, email me, uh, go on my website, and I'll write these down, Maya at SolvencyNow.com. My website is SolvencyNow.com. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, soon to be on TikTok, all that good stuff. So I hope I was able to answer all of your questions. If you need any help, let me know. No matter where you're at, I can always help you, even if you just need a consultation or something. So I look forward to seeing you all again soon. And thank you for coming. Thank you for watching Bottom Line Live. I'll see you next Thursday on the Bottom Line Live. Bye.